get the locals out and we're live. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Aisha Adkins, and I am the constituency organizer for Caring Across Generations. Thank you so much uh, for joining us again at Caregiver Corner. Today, I am so excited uh, to have with me uh, Siona Ravi and Kathy Mueller of the Center for Urban Pedagogy. And I'd also like to welcome back our 2020 Caring Across Generations Care Fellow, Brandon Will. Uh, now, before we get started, I know that some of you may not be familiar with Caring Across Generations. Um, we are a national movement to organize family caregivers, people with disabilities and older adults who believe that this country needs a care infrastructure that is equitable, accessible, and affordable for all of us. We understand that care needs occur across the lifespan and that home and community-based services allow all of us to live and age in our homes and communities with the dignity that we deserve. As I mentioned at the top, uh, CUP is a nonprofit organization that uses the power of design to demystify policies that impact our communities so that more of us can take advantage of these policies and participate in shaping them. Caring Across has worked with them to create giving care and getting care. So A. <laughs> a brochure and poster to help caregivers understand what is available to them when seeking long-term care supports. Kathy Mueller is an award-winning graphic designer and an associate professor of advertising at Temple University in Philadelphia. She co-designed the publication layout with her design partner, Napur Agarwal. Brandon Will is one of uh, Caring Cross Generation's outstanding fellows, and he cares for his mother, uh, Janice, uh, in Chicago. Uh, and he presided, he provided essential feedback during community sessions held over Zoom, uh, where uh, the CUP team interviewed Caring Across care activists and used their feedback to uh, make the CUP pamphlet more accessible and approachable to caregivers. Um, I did not share additional information on uh, uh, on C Siona, and so I will let her do that when she introduces herself. Um, so I'd like to just take this uh, moment to have each of our guests uh, share a little bit about themselves and their role in this project. Let's get started with uh, Siona. Hey, um, thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'm Siona and I work at the Center for Urban Pedagogy or CUP. Um, and I've been at CUP for almost four years and my role is to work with designers like Kathy and organizations like Caring Across Generations to make um, beautiful projects like this one. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today. Awesome, thank you Siona and Kathy. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Um, I am faculty at Temple University in the Department of Advertising and Public Relations, and I'm also a practicing graphic designer. Um, I had the privilege of working on this project with a partner. Her name is Nupur Agarwal, and she's faculty at San Francisco University. Um, so we work remotely to collaborate um, together on this project and some other things. And uh, this was a, a true pleasure. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Kathy. And last but not least, Brandon. Hey there. Um, so yeah, I was one in a team of caregivers. So there was a whole group of us from all different backgrounds and in all different situations. And we were all kind of putting our heads together, trying to figure out what is yeah, just the best ways to uh, be the most accessible and have actual outreach to early caregivers with the uniqueness of the challenge being that a lot of times, even in just, you know, the first quarter of the caregiving journey, you don't even realize that it's what you're doing. So that was kind of the challenge we were all presented with and worked through. Definitely. And I want to circle back on that, Brandon, the idea that a lot of caregivers don't even identify as such uh, early on in the journey. So um, yeah, definitely glad that you're here. So Siona and Kathy, would you share a little bit more about um, 
well, and I guess Siona in particular, uh, a bit more about what uh, CUP is and how it relates to policy. Um, and then for, for both of you, like, what is the project that you, you know, partnered with Caring Across on and how did you work with Caring Across to, um, to really develop uh, this project? Um, and then Kathy, you know, how did you uh, get connected with CUP? So I know that's a lot, so feel free to, to ask for refreshers, but I'm, I'm just curious in knowing more about, um, about the pamphlet and about the collaboration process. Yeah, thank you, Aisha. Um, I can start with just talking a little bit about, about CUP. Um, but we're a Brooklyn-based nonprofit, and our work really tries to address the fact that so many policies that shape people's everyday lives are really hard to understand. And the consequence of that is that people don't know how to meaningfully engage with these policies and often need a lawyer just to understand their rights or don't even realize that they have rights until it's too late. Um, so to make policies easier to understand, we collaborate with amazing designers like Kathy and organizations that are really working to address policy like Caring Across. Um, to make visual tools that explain how these policies work so more people can claim their rights or even know how a system works so they can work to influence change within it. Because sometimes we're explaining pretty unjust policies and systems that people want to organize to change um, and understanding how they work is often the first step that they have to take. Um, so with this project, we're not just explaining like one specific policy, we're explaining a whole bunch of different policies and resources that impact caregivers. And I think before this project, you'd have to look in a lot of different places to find all the information you needed, um, like one web website for Medicare, or one for elder care locators. And a lot of this information wasn't actually even directed toward caregivers. It's sort of just random places, random like audiences. It's just really hard to find and it's really overwhelming. Um, so we worked really hard to reframe this project and take all the resources and policies that could be useful for caregivers. Um, and frame it from the perspective of caregivers and how they're interacting within a care system. Um, and I think that the last thing I'll say is just that one of the things that really struck me um, when hearing from different caregivers about their experiences was that many people become caregivers suddenly. You know, it's not something you're preparing your whole life for. And so the idea of like having this material, having this resource when you become a caregiver can actually help you be more prepared because Many caregivers are just taking it on themselves to learn a lot of medical information and then learn a lot of policy. You just take, there's so much you're learning all at once. And so the earlier you find out this information, the better. Um, so we were really working to frame this from the moment that caregivers become caregivers. Um, and I can let Kathy talk more about our process. Sure, thank you. Um, so uh, one of the questions was, how did I become involved and come to working on this project? Well, CUP has this fabulous program called Making Policy Public, and um, I applied with my design partner, and we actually applied three times, so third time is the charm, but we really wanted this opportunity. And finally, uh, we were selected for the, for the project after you know, an application and interview to round process. And then we got matched. So then we eagerly awaited our, uh, you know, watching our inbox and to see who we were matched with. So CUP matched us with Carrying Across and really came to this uh, project cold, you know, but we had an enthusiasm for becoming more civically engaged designers. And that's what appealed to us about this program that CUP led. And um, yeah, and the rest is, is history when we got matched with Caring Across and, and brought onto this highly collaborative project. That's awesome. Thank you both for sharing a bit more context around what uh, CUP does and the amazing work. And then um, obviously the way that uh, as designers, uh, you're able, Kathy and your design partner are able to um, utilize your talents for, um, for a broader purpose, right? That's, that's incredible. And, um, and I think super inspiring as well. And I'm curious to know, um, and, and Brandon, you can chime in here as well. Um, what involvement our care activists, our care fellows uh, had in informing uh, this this project. Um, and really, actually, before we dive into that, I, I should say that, um, you know, as I mentioned, Brandon uh, was one of our, our 2020 care fellows and was actually uh, 
on Caregiver Corner almost a year, a year to the day, um, uh, and was joined by his uh, mother, Janice, uh, who is living with Parkinson's disease. And as we know that April is uh, Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month. Um, so it's certainly uh, a, a kind of a full circle uh, moment for, for Brandon. But I, I would love to hear, um, before we dive more into your uh, your journey, Brandon, um, what your uh, what the care activists um, did to really inform uh, this project and guide uh, guide the accessibility. Uh, for for new caregivers, um, Brandon, if you'll kick us off, and then uh, I'd love to hear from from Kathy and Siona as well. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, we had a lot of discussions and really had to kind of uh, pull from our different backgrounds. And uh, as, you know, it's, it's one of the most interesting and challenging, I think, things of working with big groups of caregivers is that like every story is so differently unique. Um, but also there are these really harsh similarities um, and we'll have the same problems and how to get over them. Um, so, so yeah, so it was just a, a, a lot of, a lot of asking questions and a lot of, I remember being surprised by some people's um, responses because we'd be looking at kind of every aspect of what they were trying to do from the copy that they were writing to the art that they were trying to use to connect to people. Um, and they were wonderful with being open to just uh, some real challenges because when you're working with a group like that, you're getting, you know, you're getting like a dozen strong opinions that can often be divergent at points or in other, at other points in solidarity. Um, so I think that would have been one of the unique challenges uh, for them. Um, yeah, I'll pass it along. Um, yeah, I mean, Brandon gave such such helpful feedback in those sessions. And I think so much of what you said, we like very, we wrote that down and then applied it to the next draft. So thank you, Brandon. And I think, you know, one conversation that we were having throughout was like, what does caregiving actually look like? Knowing that people, it looks very different for different people. There's so many different health conditions, family situations, all these things, but um, caregiving is often, it's not just the clinical part of it, right? It's cooking meals for someone. It's being on the phone with Medicaid, trying to like enroll. It's like all of these different moments that are often pretty invisible and not really what people picture when they think of caregiving. Mm -hmm. So from these conversations, we really try to understand like what it looks and feels like for people. Um, and I think Kathy and Newper did a really beautiful job like capturing um, what that looks like. Like the, the pamphlet really shows like different like things within a home, you know, there's like post-it notes with like a list of things to do. There's like little um, containers for pills and like all these little scenes, I think just really beautifully capture um, what caregiving looks, I, I think they beautifully capture what it looks and feels like for people. Thank you. Um, I can recall part of our process, there were at least two different community sessions, these feedback sessions, where we had drafts of the publication that were brought into Zoom, you know, share screen, hear lots of different opinions. I think Brandon really nailed it with um, sort of them, you know, interpreting that feedback and and choosing which things to act on, um, you know, is is a is a challenge. But that feedback was so essential for shaping. I mean, pretty dramatically shaping changes that we made. Um, and then in addition to those community feedback sessions, we also had the opportunity to put together some questions and requests that went out to the care fellows. So they got back to us um, with answers to those questions, but also photographs. So we had a, a list that we wanted, um, you know, as part of our research for understanding what their lives were like, um, taking photos uh, around the house and um, taking a photo of like a moment of joy. And that's where, you know, the, you know, I, I, I know that it's already been mentioned, like the post-it notes and the pillboxes and, and the calendar, those are all things that we were noticing in the photographs. And, and not just seeing it one place, but seeing it as recurring elements that were showing up in a lot of different, um, in you know, a lot of 
different care fellows that were providing those photos, seeing that those reoccurring themes. And then in addition, we were asking for selfies. So I have to say that the <laughs> that the the fellows, you know, um, really, um, you know, the, their responses came in to this section that's called from caregiver to caregiver, where we have some quotes and advice that we pulled out from those community sessions and also illustrations that came from their selfies. So thank you, Brandon. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, I think that that's, that's, I think one of the things that I appreciate about this pamphlet, not only is it beautifully designed and illustrated, I think that being able to have those visual interpretations, um, and I think uh, you just did such a phenomenal job of uh, really synthesizing what I'm sure was a tremendous amount of information in order to uh, create something that speaks to a wide variety of lived experiences. And I, I know how challenging that can be. So, uh, so you know, I, I certainly applaud that um, because yeah, I'm sure it was a feat, but something that you should be, should be proud of. Um, now, Brandon, I'd like to go back to you and just um, for, for those who are watching and listening, uh, learn a little bit more about your personal care journey and, um, and really where something like this, a resource like this would have been uh, useful at the beginning of that journey. I mean, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the, that's the question. That's the huge thing. And yeah, first of all, I was, yeah, I was surprised to see myself illustrated. I've never been illustrated before. It's a new experience. It's in this, uh, it's an interesting one, <laughs> uh, but I love the, the, the final product. And it is, I mean, to speak to that question, it is something that is, it is inviting because um, I mean, so yeah, so me with my care journey, I started taking care of my mom right after I got out of uh, grad school and her health was spiraling and I had to make the difficult decision to kind of reroute my life and um, move from New York back to Michigan where I'd grown up. And I, I, I did it in bursts, you know, where first I thought I'd be going home for just a couple months and then nine months later, I extended it longer and then kept extending it until realizing you know i live here now <laughs> um and in the process it's it it is a slow process and i do think that that's just in all the caregiver stories i hear and the people i talk to you know it is there's there's one thing and there's something off and then you step in and then you slowly find yourself more and more uh entangled in this thing that I think a common thing in life is that you're, I mean, you're probably never ready for it, no matter how old your parent or whoever you're taking care of is. Um, so yeah, that's, to me, it's the, I just think about how much denial and how much, uh, you know, even like uncomprehension of what is happening to you goes on. And I, like, I remember being, you know, so this is six years ago or whatever, yeah, probably six years ago, I remember being like in, in doctor's appointments. And, you know, so we had a, a good year where when we were trying to get a diagnosis with stuff, we had doctor's appointments. I had two a week for for a long, long time. And we, you're seeing specialists and then you're seeing trying different therapies and you're trying different treatments. Um, and I remember just being in the doctor's office one morning and just having this really cynical uh but like I was on Instagram, just I'm seeing everybody's, it was summer. So I'm seeing everybody's vacations. I'm seeing everybody's and their picnics and they're, they're at the bar and their drinks and their food picks. And I just remember being so cynical and like wanting to share just a picture of like, hey, I'm in the, you know, I'm in the waiting room. And what I love about this is that this is that, but without being cynical, <laughs> uh, you know, because the cynicism, there is something that, you know, cynicism can appeal to, to you know, when you're in those trenches, but at the same time, it's uh, it's so tough. I mean, to, yeah, to me, that's the kind of central component of it is this denial, because you, when you're dealing with a caregiving situation, it's not just the denial of the person who is ill, and the person who is being drawn to caregiver uh, or people. It's the whole family's in denial, and like we are a culture in denial uh, about so many things, and a lot of times, you know, you'd like to think, but. A lot of people aren't nice to family caregivers, a lot of administrators and people. Um, and whether that's because they're dealing with their own things or they're wanting to think that this situation this person is would never happen to me. Um, there's just so, so it's just 
caregiving is this unique thing and we're at this unique point where it's this thing that is there, so we've put so many mirrors and there's so many people who actively don't want to talk about it and this project is trying to find a way to invite people who may not be friendly to this conversation to like think these thoughts that maybe you don't want to think and to like enter into this community that maybe you don't see yourself as a part of and I mean, a, a pamphlet like this definitely would have helped me because even if I would have, uh, it's 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 fairly comprehensive. And there's, so aside from the stuff that a person could be cynical about, there's the, there's the stuff that, that they can't deny that they need. So, so, uh, so, I mean, I can think back and if I think back in my most cynical times, if I would have picked up something like this and I would have started to connect the resources and I would have like, you know, tucked it in my pocket with all, you're accumulating so many pamphlets at that time. Uh, but it's the thing, most of them are for physical therapy places in this doctor, in this treatment. Like they aren't for caregivers and they aren't for something like this. Um, so to have something like this to tuck away, even if you didn't think of yourself as a caregiver yet, because I think it takes some time for everybody, but to have that there and to, and to help you slowly come around to it is, is where I can see this wonderful pamphlet having a great uh, effect. Did that answer all the questions? <laughs> it did, and it answered it expertly. Uh, so that makes sense. And I think something that resonates, uh, resonates with me uh, and what you shared is there's, there's this, idea of feeling more empowered when you have a resource like this, um, because not only does it, um, you know, by including the voices of the experts being, you know, each of each of you and, and myself included, those who are um, a part of the uh, caring majority who are providing and receiving care, you know, by having those voices kind of at the helm, it, A, uh, makes sure that folks know that they're not you know, this is not a singular experience that they are going through by themselves. That's never uh, been encountered before and shall never be encountered again by another, you know, human being on the planet, which I think sometimes uh, engaging in care um, can begin to feel that way. It can feel a bit isolating at times. Um, but also uh, I agree with, you know, the idea that having something that is not framed in uh, cynicism, but is framed in, you know, pragmatism, I think is really important um, because it meets, it meets folks where, where they are. And, um, and, and I think there, there's a tremendous amount of power in, in that and in knowing, all right, you know what, it is what it is. This is the situation that we're in. Um, but it looks like there, there are some ways to go about it and, and there, there are forms of support. So, uh, so I think that's, that's really important and really special. Um, as we just begin to wind down, uh, the last question I'd like to ask is, what are each of your favorite uh, aspects of this project? Um, and we'll start with uh, Siona. I need to take a second to look at it again. <laughs> sure. There's sure. So many, I think like my favorite part about this project is that it really is made for someone that has this moment to sit with it for a long time and it really rewards you because there's so many little details that are incredible. And I think it does a really good job of capturing, you know, I think that um, Brandon's point about cynicism was really apt because um, we really struggled, I think, to find the right tone because even though we're saying, hey, caregivers, here's all these resources you have, the care system has a lot of problems and there are so many gaps in resources and there's so much wrong with the system. And so in early versions of this project, we actually had a whole section that was like, here are all the problems with the care system. <laughs> and then we realized that, you know what, for a caregiver that is going through this, we don't need to just repeat this information. They probably already know it and that might not be really engaging and then inviting to keep reading. So I think my favorite part about this is that our solution to, because we wanted to name that there are gaps here. We didn't want this to be this overly optimistic guide that promises an easy journey. So the poster opens up into this, it opens up into this big poster that says, join us in the fight for better care. And it shows like demands from caregivers. It says like a just and equitable care system, access to community-based care, respecting their labor. So it's sort of holding many of the problems and like, envisioning this better world and this better care system. And so I think that's sort of my favorite part of it. It shows that like it's communities of people that are not just in isolation, it's people coming together and that caregiving is this labor of love and care. Um, and also that there's a real fight here um, that 
needs support and is a really important cause to continue advocating for. That's so true. That's so true. Uh, Kathy. There's so much I love about this project, really. Um, it's been a tremendous experience. It was quite a commitment. I mean, we worked on this for over a year. I mean, it's really, um, you know, we spent a, a lot of time on Zoom together. Um, and I'll have to say that probably my, my, I've got two things I think I want to highlight. The first being working with the people was, um, you know, a favorite aspect of this project. Working with Siona, um, working with my partner, Nooper, working with Janae, working at a cup, working with Antonia at Caring Across, um, and meeting the care fellows on community sessions. That was absolutely the highlight. Um, after the people, I would say that I'm really um, thankful for the way that this project pushed me outside of my comfort zone. So working on a highly illustrated piece is not my typical um, type of look and feel for projects. It's, it's outside of my usual style. So that was a that was brand new and I feel really proud to have accomplished that. I learned a new, I learned Procreate in order to do the illustrations. I had never used Procreate before. So the way that that pushed me, um, it, I think was like a really healthy professional, you know, thing that um, makes me feel really proud to try something new, learn something new and, and, you know, hold it at the end of the day and go like, yeah, it's, it turned out pretty good. <laughs> um, and then, you know, and it's also pushing me in terms of it was brand new content that I didn't know anything about. And so I got to, you know, I, I got to learn about the care system and really be frankly shocked with a lot of the ways that it does fall short in ways that I had no idea. So I feel like I, you know, now I'm a more informed uh, citizen and um, that is a way that this has given, you know, given back to me. Working Brandon. with people was my favorite part too, actually. I'm gonna steal Kathy's answer. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I love collaboration. That's wonderful. And then Brandon, uh, aside from being uh, transformed into uh, an illustrated image, uh, what are what, what's your favorite part, part of the project? Um, I mean, to, to me, yes. I mean, you know, working with Caring Across Generations and being in the fellowship was such, it was, um, it was such a, a wonderful invitation to, to a community that enriched my life. And it's the people in it uh, that I met who were also fellows, like these are people who have become really dear to me. And, you know, just, I look in this pamphlet and I see like, I see the impact and the input of, you know, 25 people who are amazing. And that's just the people I know. And I know that there's so many more other people who are behind the scenes on this. And to me, that's kind of, I mean, it's what this big, huge thing, it's, you know, it's showing community at the end. And that's what this idea is about. I think, so yeah, to me, it's the, it's the, it's, it's the, the, the practicalness and the hopefulness in it, because it does strike that balance, I think, of showing the realities that a person has to navigate and um, the, that the future can be different. Uh, and that's what we're, we're working for. Like, I think all of us and everybody here, like it, the care system we have doesn't have to be the care system that we keep. Um, so, and, and I feel that this is very much emblematic of that. Uh, and that really makes me happy. I love that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Things don't have to stay as they are. Um, Thank you so much uh, to our guests today, uh, Kathy Mueller, Siona Bravi, and Brandon Will. It was such a pleasure having you with us here at Caregiver Corner um, and just be in conversation with each of you. If you are interested in reading excerpts and downloading a PDF of, of the uh, Giving Care and Getting Care uh, pamphlet, which is also uh, 
created in both English and Spanish, uh, visit caringacross.org backslash giving dash care dash and dash getting dash care. Uh, you'll see that in the, uh, you'll see the link in the chat as well. Um, you can also visit uh, Welcome to Cup for more information about uh, the Center for Urban Pedagogy. Uh, we also want to hear from you. We want to hear your connection to care. We want to hear your care stories. Uh, so again, visit uh, our website uh, to, to share your experience. Uh, we thank you uh, for tuning in and for, for watching and we will see you next time. Take care. Thank you, Aisha, so much. Thank you.